What's up guys, this is Heiss. Today we're playing Railroads Online and I figured we would try and connect to the oil refinery. The last industry left to connect. So um, we've got a connection in at our switch post here. Um, uh, I, I mean, it is a connection. It's not, um, I mean, it's a little haphazard. Uh, and it's a switch post. I realized that we haven't shown this uh, yet on uh, on a video. This has just been on live streams. But the Australians convinced me to lay my oil <laughs> oil field line entirely out of switches. And so save for the couple bits that we needed to, you know, make precise adjustments for. Um, yeah, every, every piece of track to the oil field is a switch. So, um... Yeah, it's kind of uh, brilliant and gives you plenty of times to potentially derail. So, anyways, um, I don't recommend anyone do this, but it's kind of silly and it allowed us to place a bunch of floating track, which is fun. But anyways, I've, I put this second leg of the Y in and none of the switches are lined, so that's that'll be a problem eventually. But um, I wanted to start and head up to the refinery. And I think the easiest way to do it is uh, you can kind of see there's a little little hill that kind of runs most of the way there. And so I think we're going to head that way. It's going to be off through the trees this way here. So we're going to go and do our first pass at this and see if we can't make a somewhat decent looking alignment. So I'm going to try and delete the second spline of track. Try not to put my class 70 in the dirt here. Okay. That way I've got enough separation between my switches. If you don't have separation between your switches and you have two switch stands right next to each other, it's a really easy way to accidentally put something on the ground or run through a switch because you didn't know which switch you threw. I have watched that happen with my own eyeballs. All right, so now we're going to run a um, bit of grade and see if we can't figure our way out over there. So We need a patented survey trestle here. Okay, I'll climb the patented survey trestle and see what we can see. Oh. Is that a caboose? Of course it is! I'm sure it is. It's hard to see from here. Um, I've had the realization, obviously, that uh, we've run a roller coaster line <laughs> through through this area so yeah we're gonna I didn't I didn't think about that I forgot the fact that I put a roller coaster right there okay so ignoring our first attempt the real move is going to be to run a switch out of this beautiful track here and then make some poo poo track off to the right where we will climb the actual hill that I was looking for yeah can see the defined edge of it on the map there. So we're gonna run around this one. Start with the variable. Bring the grade back so I can make a little bit of a switch stand abutment. Okay, now we'll go to a constant. Set it at two for now. And just let it do the thing. And we'll sneak up the hill over here. This is a nice shallow chunk of hill and it'll be a beautiful railroad with scenic views of um, a giant wooden structure. <laughs> it looks very silly. <laughs> oh, we had too much fun with that. Perhaps someday the ESD will have a, a proper alignment for that chunk of railroad, but I don't know if today or this week or this month or this patch is going to be the, the day that we do that. So. Okay, so I'm hoping we, we're going to be able to come up and just sneak right up onto the big flat around the back side here without too much drama. Oh yeah, I can see the, the caboose on the uh, the stack over there, so we're, <laughs> we're getting quite close now. <laughs> Alright, well this is the plinth. So it's apparently not uh, two that we want. Apparently two and a two and a half. Two and a half's a bit a bit steeper than I wanted, but that's nah, we can live with it. And then we'll come back with a variable to finish it off and make sure that we're at a decent enough height here. 
And then we can come in and set up our loading and unloading. I think I'm gonna have to make a, a separate spur track for oil barrels there. And we'll figure out the whole industry setup here, but. Yo, 504. Yeah, it's, uh, well, flaming caboose. <laughs> I didn't put that up there for, for reference. One of, uh, one of the M.O.W. crew did. And they've alluded to it, but it's, it's finally happened. I've finally seen it up close. Okay. So, I guess, uh, before we get too deep in the industry build here, I'm gonna run back and clear the trees, and then we'll see about smoothing this out. Okay, so the trees are cleared. We're gonna start thinking about laying some track out of this, and we're gonna try and... Try and do it somewhat okay, I think. So I think there's a, a trick. If I've watched my buddy Clown, that's a neat trick to line things up there. So now we have a point there, a point there, and now we can angle snap and lock our spline in by deleting that. So we guarantee that that piece of track is smooth with the switch. So we're gonna try and see if we can get this to, to play kind of nice here. And I know Clown likes to count his tie segments, but I like to lay them at the splines just about till their end. That way I don't have to fuss with counting. And we're gonna slowly spiral this curve sharper. See if we can't do it the real way that they would do it with a compound curve to get to the, uh, the actual degree of curvature. And then it doesn't want to place for reasons. There we go. And maybe 15 was a little too sharp. Yeah, 15 was too sharp. We're gonna try and make this somewhat pretty, darn it. So we're gonna come back. We wanna end up, I think, with about a, a 12 in there, maybe? All right, start over. From the switch, relink to ourselves. All right, so we're gonna go straight. Start to ease into the curve. Ease in a little bit more. And now I want to be at about the full curve. And we're gonna we're gonna say these ones go to eleven, I think. It's gonna be a smidge on the inside line there, but I think that's okay. And then now we'll bring it back, ease it out of the curve. So we've gone from the point of curvature to the point of spiral. And now we'll run it straight. And there is a hitch in my groundworks because I was trying to follow the, the, the grade and then I, uh, and then I decided against it. So we're laying straight track there. So I think what we can do is we can grab a piece of groundwork and just snap it in and, and run it up where we need it to. Just so we can get track in. I think that's gonna be the trick right there. Okay. So now we want to do the same thing. We snap the crossover. And then we want to lay a piece backwards over it. Delete the crossover. And now I can snap perfectly parallel to my existing track. Oops. Now I can snap perfectly parallel to my existing track, turn angle snap back on, and we're back in business. This is actually not, really not that hard. And I always said I never did it just because it took so much time, but it really doesn't, so shame on me. <laughs> All right, this one we're just going to do a simple curve rather than a compound curve, just to start. Keep it nice and smooth, about a three degree curve. And I, th I don't want to go to tangent, I guess, so we do have this curve coming up. So I guess we will we will compound this end of the curve a little bit. So we'll go to about I don't 
about uh, 10 degrees there. Looks about right. And then we'll spiral back out again, back to a three. Straighten it off. I guess Clown does the shorter tie count segments so that he can always snap back to himself without needing the, uh, the diamond, which is kind of smart. But, you know, good for him. Apparently missed a tree, and also this is just a... This is just a corner. This isn't a curve. This is a corner. Alright, well, I'm gonna grab a variable grade spline, because that's right on the grade transition. And, uh, we'll try and smooth it out a little bit. Okay, and that'll give us some amount of options on where we need to go. So I should be able to just now lay the track how I need to. So grab our 90 degree piece again. Do the silly thing. Oh, I guess no, you, you don't have to lay through it twice, do you? You could just lay through it once and then delete it afterwards. That would be smarter. Oops. Apparently I should watch all of his tutorials, not just some of them. All right, so this is gonna be a sharp guy. So we're gonna just start right at 15. And then we're going to spiral to, like, maybe 18. Okay, that's that's looking really good. Now we're going to come out nice and gentle to a slight spiral there. Give us a piece of tangent. And now we'll do a reverse curve. And we're going to end up interfacing with a switch here, but... Yeah, we'll just leave that there for now. Who says I can't lay good track? Look, I, I put an extra couple minutes towards it, and... I mean, it's not perfect, but it looks pretty nice. Gotta get rid of this diamond that's sitting in the middle of it. And uh, one of these pieces... Oh, that's a little... Oh. That's a... Uh, I'm sure that... Clown's got a way to get rid of that. Oh man, it was so perfect until then! And now I don't know what to do. Um, I think I can go back and snap the curve back in to its existing point, but that's why... Oh. Uh, I think that's why he lays his tracks shorter, so it's easier to snap. Okay, so uh, one piece of freehand trash to fix the problem. No, it deleted the good one! <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I guess we're going to relay that chunk of curve. Get all the way up to there. What did we start at? I think we went direct to 15, which is part of the problem, but we didn't start right there. We started after a short segment that was vaguely the length of... Yeah. Why did that link? Okay. I was talking my stuff up, and um, apparently, no, I, I cannot lay good track, because as soon as I went to fix my oopsie, it uh, my skills are not the best. So we're going to rely on Yield Faithful hand snapping it, and that's kind of garbage, but that's okay. It'll support track speed operation, so... Let's set up the industry and uh, see if we can't... Oh, I don't even know where I have train cars to deliver stuff. I think I still have to go buy my old tank cars. So we'll at least get the, the railroad built and then maybe we'll run some trains next time. Or, maybe, if you're a member of my Discord, you can come run trains with me this Friday. Um... Friday night, they're going to have some live stream stuff. We're going to visit uh, Viewer Railroad. We're going to uh, start a new hardcore save, myself and the MOW crew. Hopefully they'll be doing more uh, <laughs> more track work than I will. But um, we're going to start a hardcore level save where the, the map has been changed <laughs> so that it's basically awful, uh, is, is what I'm hearing. But uh, all the industries are over on the steep side of the map. Uh, someone figured out how to move the industries, and so now, yeah, the uh, 
all the industries are over in one spot, pretty much. So you have to like, they're all on the eastern side of the map, so you have to deal with the mountains for every single piece of industry, and it's apparently quite the challenge. And so we figured, hey, you know, let's uh, put our skills to the test, see how far we can get without, you know, without too much issue. So we're gonna do that. But after that, if you're a member of my Discord, link is in the description. We're going to be doing public operations on the ESD. I want to see if we can't get a bunch of people in in the game. If we could get, you know, close to the server limit, that would be awesome. But um, get a bunch of people on, run trains, have a good time, and just interact with me and and have a good Friday night. So uh, if you're interested in that, I wholeheartedly recommend you join my Discord. Again, the link is in the description. And that's going to be Friday night after streaming is finished up. So I'm thinking probably somewhere late PST or uh, late EST as well. So, you know, close to midnight Eastern Standard, but thinking around 9 o'clock Pacific. So we'll see uh and that's gmt minus eight so there's an event in the discord if you join and it says exactly um what time it is it mirrors to your local time so that's right this industry is always a bit of a chore to set up okay and I don't mind it being just a complete stub back in situation. It it can be fun to switch, so. But I think that the alignment that we were getting with that groundwork over there is, yeah, I don't know why I curved it off that way. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Let's get rid of that. And uh, we'll come over this way. Okay. Constant grade. So we're building flat anyways and then we basically just have to have room to put the first lead switch in so we'll just start turning it this way cut this stuff down and uh, and we'll see about coming back oh I also uh, I asked another round of questions to QMA and uh, we'll save them for another video this is going to be focused on my playthrough, of course, and and then uh, we'll have a, a separate dev vlog that's shorter in format so people can just get that content. But we asked some really good questions about the spline update and uh, got some exciting answers. I'm really, really looking forward to that. So the, uh, the rumor mill is that the first test update that we'll get to see for the public is hopefully going to be in a couple weeks here, two, three weeks, so... Stay tuned on that. That's been spoiled on the Discord already, so I don't feel too bad saying that in here. But I don't think it's going to be the complete update. I think it's just going to be uh, testing the spline tools and the construction tools and seeing how that goes. But it's going to be fun. It's going to be a new era for the game, I think. Because as much... I mean, you can make some really beautiful track. I mean, by you, I mean, not me, you people, the the clowns, the pharmas, the Mickleys, the, you know, the p folks on Discord um, can make really pretty track uh, with the current system, and it's just not my forte, but I think mine's turning out somewhat okay for this, this chunk of railroad here. I'm not sure I wanted to do a reverse switch there. I don't know. It might want to fit. Now it'd be best if I had a separate switch all the same ladder, I think. So we'll do that. It's always kind of confusing to set this guy up. So we'll get another switch to the right, about there, and then we'll adjust the positioning of that last one. Placing that last one first was the mistake. There we go. Didn't want to blow up. So we could do something like that, I think. And then we should be able to vaguely line these three up. Although I should replace this one now. Because those two, while not in a perfect line, they were in a better line than this one was. So we'll, we'll come back and now grab these. And this is yard trackage. This is accepted track. We don't care about the quality of this track. This track can be junk. There's, um, there's different classifications of track. 
and the FRA classifies them differently. I don't know if it applies to narrow gauge track, actually, but um, you get different speed limits and commodities that you can haul based on what the kind of track is, and there's different rules for how it needs to be maintained, whether or not it's like straight or curved or the degree of curvature, the, all that stuff. And um, it's kind of funny. They're, they allow for some pretty crappy-looking stuff to remain in service. Uh, <laughs> when I worked at BNSF, we were at you know a mechanical shop, so the the track was just junk because it was, you know, what are we gonna do? We're running down a straight track going maybe five miles an hour. Our our rules said five or less, and so you know there was a chunk of railroad where it was like, the ties just looked horrendously bad, just like the worst looking ties. And you couldn't believe that this thing was in service. And I asked the MOW guys, the BNSF MOW guys, not Clown and Pharma, <laughs> and uh, and all them, uh, I asked the MOW team while they were there, like, hey, I mean, these ties, I mean, I'm not a track guy, but these ties look hideous to me. Like, what's going on? Is there anything we could do? Like, the, the guys are complaining about them, and it, it rides rough through there, and he goes... It's nothing we can do. It's company policy. Uh, I can't change those ties with brand new ones out because they're the track is not bad per the legal recommendations of the class of track that it is. So it was track that I mean it was hideous looking, but for accepted track, shop track where you know you're going five miles an hour, the requirements said you could have that many cratered ties in a row. So it was like okay, well we just left it in service. It's acceptable. It looks bad, but it's acceptable, so. It's like, okay, well, <laughs> thanks. So I had to tell everyone, yeah, no, the track's not gonna get fixed. So, <laughs> yeah, just one of those things. But there's uh, there's different classes, uh, like class one all the way through, I believe class nine track, and higher number is better, or higher standards. So like class nine track, I don't think any class nine track exists in the United States, but that's good for like super high speed rail running like 200 miles an hour or something like that. There's a whole uh, list of it on Wikipedia that's pretty accurate. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff, you could go look. Oh uh, God, that's a kink. Who cares? ES and D, ES and D, ES and D. <laughs> My contractors will come clean it up if it really bugs them, which it probably does. So. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, this would all be accepted track or class zero track. And class one allows you to like move freight at like, I don't know, 20 miles an hour or something. And even the requirements for that aren't that much. So boom, bang, we are hooked up to the refinery. And I think um, I want to run a train up this track just to see what it looks like. I have no idea where any of my, uh, I don't think I have any tank cars i don't think i have uh, my fix looks crap oh well um i still need to buy tank cars pretty sure and uh <laughs> and i have, would have to load stuff up and, and do a bunch of industry stuff to set up a train so for next time we'll actually deliver cargo to this but i figured hey we could finish off the building of the railroad celebrate it pop the champagne all that and uh and run a train up to the top of the track. So okay, well we've made it to the Wrath of Khan and the uh, <laughs> the now I guess derail device from the spur that was uh, not uh, meant to be. But anyway, let's uh, back this thing up and we'll wire the train and then go uh, head up to the refinery and have our little celebration here. Maybe we'll get a caboose down from the top of the smokestack. <laughs> oh lordy. My fire's not quite up to temp, so the uh, boiler pressure did drop a touch, but we'll, we'll just back it in here. It looks like we've got quite a pile of pipes and boxes over there, so we could load for about 16 years, I think, and then uh, make a run to the oil field, get the mix train out. And, um, yeah, um, yeah, this is, a, this is a whole thing up here. Yeah. So, um... I think Pharma had put the uh, the Heisler on top of the stack, and then Mick had to put it back on top of the stack, or Tristan did, and then they they built this confusing thing to get it back up. 
and it sits there. And that's not my Heisler, that's Mikkeli's Heisler that he bought using cheated money. So it's a, it's a leased engine <laughs> that li lives on top of the ironworks, you know, uh, brake stack in case of emergency. And you can grab it and then use it. <laughs> All right, let's do this thing. Yeah, he got some really cursed spline segments in there. <laughs> some of the stretched wood grain. It just looks awful. I'm not sure how he did that or what he did to do that, but it's uh, a little yucky looking. Anyways, we've got our 12 empty stake flats, so the 2.5% won't be a challenge for the old number 3 on the ESD. Should have no problems here. <laughs> God, that caboose is just shining nice, bright, <laughs> off in the distance. It renders from further than the flames do, I guess for the host. But And a reminder, at the spline update, we are going to be increasing render distance as well for clients. It's being doubled to a kilometer, I believe. Or half kilometer. Can't remember. Point is, it's being doubled. And pay no attention to the groundworks over there. Those those were a mistake. Man, I'm going to be excited for when I can do like 30 in this thing. We'll be living dangerously. All right, now let's look at my beautiful track. What does it look like from the train? It looks like I should have replaced the groundwork like Clown does and uh, sunk it into the ties and then also not had floating track. But the actual alignment is uh, is pretty nice. Angle snap works a treat. Funny fact. And it really didn't take that much extra time. I've, the whole time I've been like, oh yeah, I just gotta, just gotta do it quick, lay the track down, who cares? And by and large, I mean, it didn't really add that much extra time to what I was doing, so... Should just, uh... Should just do the thing. Use the angle snap, make the track happen. It's even this sharper curve is not a big deal. And even this theoretically gross... Yeah, well, my gross fix is a little gross. Yoink. That's fine. Train didn't derail. It's actually better than some of the curves up in the mountains, probably. And we're not lined, so we'll just jam the brake on. Probably derail. Boink. Boink. Yep. Well, it's been too long since we've derailed this, so... Um, I'm gonna go pee in a cup, and on that bombshell, it is time to end. So, <laughs> thanks so much for watching, everyone. Uh, it's been so much fun making this series, and I, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you like it, subscribe to the channel, and then uh, click the little bell as well so that you can see when I post uploads. But coming soon will be the next set of dev vlogs. So, thanks for watching.